Hi everybody, I'm Gabe. I'm uh, with Savvy Panda. Uh, been using Joomla since about just over it became since after it became 1.0. Um, been in business for about 11 years now. Um, uh, I'm an inbound marketing certified consultant. I am the business editor on the JCM, uh, co-founder of Joomla Milwaukee and Joomla Day Midwest with Vic back there. And you know, I do web development for a living. Uh, my background's in computer science, but we've done a lot with marketing, and I want to show you guys what we've done with marketing and what's worked for us. And I do have marketing geeks on, who are employees of mine who taught me all this and do all this. But um, so I just want to show you really what we've learned along the way. A uh, little bit more about me. Uh, in my free time, I like to do combat sports, like getting thrown, choked, submitted. It's fun. So <laughs> these are Hans and Franz. These are chief security officers at Savvy Panda. And I love spoiling these guys as well in my free time. And of course, traveling. I love to travel. I don't get to do it as much as I can. Uh, this is in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. A uh, little bit more about Savvy Panda. We specialize in Joomla web design and development, just like all you, but also inbound marketing is one of our core services, as well as uh, some search engine optimization, which is part of that. We work with everything from small businesses all the way up to Fortune 500s. So today, you're going to learn some ninja marketing wushu, uh, but be careful because what you're going to show you might get you some more leads. So essentially, the process I'm going to show you guys today, uh, we use this process, and in three months, we were able to increase our leads 675%. That's pretty awesome. Um, if you guys want to, we have uh, this Twitter hashtag, if you guys want to do any tweeting about this. So some key takeaways for today. Uh, we're going to show you the inbound marketing process the methodology that we use for traffic generation, how to run a lead nurturing campaign, optimizing landing pages and uh, call to actions, A-B testing and data analysis. Uh, so things of old. Marketing used to be like this. You used to have a budget. You'd spend some money. Money got you leads. Um, you know, you got in front of people. It worked. There was a direct correlation. The more money you spent, as long as you knew what you were doing, the more leads you got. Then things changed. The internet came along. And the balance of power shifted. You didn't have to have a lot of money anymore. Now, small companies could be on the same level or better as people with a lot of money. And people revolted and said, we're tired of this old marketing crap, we don't want any more crap, we don't want all this blast marketing, and it slowly stopped working. So how does inbound marketing fit into this? Uh, inbound marketing really is just a methodology and a concept. Um, you want to earn people's attention, you want to make it easy to be found, and you want to uh, draw your customers to your website by producing quality content. And this is especially effective for small businesses uh, who have high dollar values and long sales cycles. Essentially, you're going uh, to qualify your leads shorter. Well, I'll get to that in the next slide I said. But uh, essentially, you're going to earn your way in versus the old way of buying, begging, bugging your way in. Okay. So benefits of inbound marketing. Obviously, you're going to get increased leads. Uh, you're going to get more qualified leads, which is going to give you a shorter sales cycle. Uh, it reduces your cost per lead by about 60%. You're going to get better conversion rates. You're going to get more traffic. 
So let's go over the blueprint. There's really three steps to inbound marketing. Getting found, which is probably the part people are most familiar with and probably spend the most time on. Uh, but then once you get found, you have to convert. And this is an area that we're gonna spend the most time on today. After you convert, you need to look at what you've done and what works and how you can make it better. So within this cycle, there's kind of this five-step process. You're gonna create, so you're gonna create good quality content, optimize that content, make sure it's you get found and it's effective, promote it, convert, and analyze within that cycle. So our first step, getting found. Um, you know, there's, these are really the main traffic generation points, and you know, you guys are all familiar with it. Um, SEO is obviously the best. It's gonna get you the highest conversion rate. Um, you know, blogging, how many people do blogging here? I'm curious. Uh, about a third, a quarter of the room, roughly, okay. How many guest blog on other sites? Just a handful, okay. So guest blogging is very important because you can essentially take uh, other people's established networks and uh, other people's user base and essentially uh, bring that traffic and make people more aware. Uh, I'm guessing everybody's using social media already and I'm guessing a majority are using email marketing. Uh, just some stats and why, and you know, these stats will become more apparent as we go over why content is important, but 75% uh, of users never scroll past the first page. 50% of internet users are searching the web every single day. 40% of those searches are for products and services. 20% uh, are for local businesses. 75% of people never get past the first page. And 60% of all clicks go to the first top three. Uh, worldwide, there's 88 trillion searches per month on Google, essentially 34,000 uh, searches per second. Uh, so it's really no surprise that organic shows the highest conversion rates really out of any traffic source. So like I said, you guys already know this, uh, but one of the things I really want to stress on is, you know, only about a third or a quarter of you are blogging. Uh, blogging is really important in this process and uh, people who blog have 50% higher uh, traffic than people who don't blog, but it's really a great way to show your expertise and credibility and get in front of new people. So it's, it's a really good traffic generation method and it's, it's really gonna put you above and beyond other people in this process as, as they're seeing it. So next step is convert. Uh, like I said, this is, this is our basic kind of conversion process. So you get people to your site. Uh, we're going to create content to attract those people. Once they get to the site, we're also going to entice them. So create content, call to action, landing page, stick them into a lead nurturing campaign, convert them with an offer. That's the basic process, just as we're going to go over it. Um, this is what most people's websites look like, unfortunately. You're driving your traffic, and right away you're going for the hard sell. So you're not taking in consideration the people who are just getting into the sales process at the top funnel, or maybe have started you know, looking around or in the middle of their sales process. You're only looking at people at the very bottom of the sales process, uh, and you're hard selling them. So you're really only catching a very small percentage, and that's why you're getting all these lost opportunities. The inbound process is much different. So we split it into uh, really four main parts. So you have your top funnel, middle funnel, and bottom funnel. Uh, up at the top, you have visitors and um, who you're driving traffic from your site. You have top funnel, who you're gonna attract with essentially general offers or uh, general good content. So you're gonna uh, give them uh, you know, something that's gonna appeal to a wider audience of masses. At the middle funnel, you're gonna push them, I should say, to the middle funnel with lead nurturing and more call to actions. Uh, at the middle funnel, you're gonna be narrowing down. Uh, so you're gonna get something a little bit more targeted, um, essentially qualifying that lead a little bit more. 
So at the same time, you're educating them more, which is shortening your sales cycle. And then at the bottom funnel, uh, you're going to push them to the bottom funnel, of course, with more lead nurturing and call to actions. And uh, at the bottom of the funnel, you want to convert your clients. So this is the general inbound marketing process. Hey, are you going to give us an example? Yes. It's like three slides away. <laughs> so let's talk about premium content. Premium content is really what all this is centered around. Um, there's a lot of different premium content you can put out, and it's really going to be dependent on industry or business, of course. But um, ebooks, industry trends, how to guides, uh, demo videos, tip sheets, these are all things that work really well in our industry. You also have like common questions uh, that you can answer and put out. Uh, case studies, you can put out PowerPoint presentations like you'll get shortly. I'll give you guys a link to this presentation. You can put out material kits, uh, you know, but the golden rule of putting out really this quality content is don't just use it in one spot. Make sure you're using it at least four spots. So put it in a press release, put it in an email marketing campaign, put it in an ebook, make a blog post about it, use it in multiple ways, promote it in multiple ways, you know, get, uh, make a guest blog, guest blog post around it, and really drive people. Uh, what's the important part to know about premium content is uh, people, you know, we went over how people are searching every single day, and, you know, as they're searching, you want to put out this premium content that gives them value. Um, so with, with valuable content, you want them to download it. Whether they actually read it or not, you know, not a, I know, uh, a, you know, majority of the time when I actually download something, maybe 20% of the time I actually end up reading it. But it does show the credibility and it keeps me in the mind. And as long as, you know, their information is going into the lead nurturing campaign, then you can continue to kind of uh, drip your marketing in, and we'll show you that next. So when you're creating your premium content, you have to keep three things in mind. Who's your, the target audience you're trying to target? What is their pain or problem? And what is the solution you provide? And you kind of, you create your content essentially around those three things. Um, those are really basic marketing principles. So let's look at a few examples. Uh, so some top off funnel offers. This is one we use, the Essential Guide to Inbound Marketing and SEO. Uh, I brought some of our sponsors in just to give some examples as well. Uh, the Ultimate Developers Checklist for every Joomla uh, web store. So what are we saying? This is for developers, specifically Joomla developers. And we're saying, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not yet alluding too much to the pain, but, you know, people are looking essentially for Joomla web store solutions in this case. And it's the same thing, targeting developers, Joomla web hosting. So, you know, we're educating them and getting them into our funnel. Uh, middle funnel offers. Now I'm getting a little bit more specific. At that first stage, they were just kind of maybe looking uh, for inbound marketing advice. Maybe they were just looking for Joomla Red Shops. Now we're getting more specific. Now we're saying, uh, are you kind of ready to engage? Uh, so ultimate guide to hiring an inbound marketing agency. Now we know you're maybe ready to start looking into the next step and you're researching the next step. So uh, if I'm interested in Red Shop or I'm interested in SiteGround, uh, you know, I want to know more about them and their expertise and you know, they're giving me value by showing this. And then we get to our bottom funnel, and this is where we want to put our offer in. So uh, let's schedule a consultation. Um, you'll, you know, let's uh, let's give them a coupon. Let's get them to the site. Let's put some rapid expiration around it to drive it. Um, just for some examples. So, um, you know, we're going to put those offers on a landing page, but we have to get people to the landing page. So here's our call to actions. And you want to not just have necessarily one call to actions, you want to have all three of your call to actions at the same time, because you don't know what point in a cycle somebody might be. So you want to really put out all three of your uh, call to actions, so that no matter which part of the cycle they're in, you can uh, convert them. So some tips on call to actions. 
make sure you're clear what the offer is. Don't beat around the bush, get straight to the point. Um, make it actionable, you know, start with an action verb. Um, download, register, etc. Keep it above the fold if you can, you know, make it stick out, make a placement. Uh, that's the next thing actually. Make it stand out, a lot of things you can do, color, font, probably a lot of designers in here. I think you guys know how to make things stick out. Um, make sure your call to action and the heading on your landing page match. If you start changing the language, people are less likely to convert. Uh, actually, that was my last point, include call to actions for each stage of the buying cycle. Uh, and place your call to actions on your most relevant pages. So if you're attracting people with your blog, obviously put your call to actions at your blog. Uh, put them at the bottom of your blog post. Put them in the right-hand column. Target, uh, well, you should be creating blog posts really around your, your uh, premium content anyway. So they should kind of work hand in hand regardless. And of course, test, 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 test and measure. Uh, so from our call to action, we're going to look at our landing page. So this is what a typical landing page might look like. Um, and let's point out some of the stuff on these landing pages. You'll notice there's no menu on this page. We're removing pretty much all distractions that we can. We're making the only one focus on the page, and really that's the only focus. You'll notice we have a consistent call to action that's consistent with my... Uh, previous call to action, and you'll notice the language on my download button is the same as it is at the top, is the same it is on my call to action. Consistency shows higher conversion rates. You want to make sure your message is always clear. You're always pointing them to the direction, so I'm uh, pointing them over to the form, telling them to fill out the form, and of course, we want to get shares if we can, if they like it. So let's look a little bit more about this. How we're qualifying our visitor. Who's the, uh, you know, who's the offer for? Uh, address the points of pain. Uh, and leverage the, you know, make sure it's easy copy. Show what they're going to receive. This is actually very important to show them what they're going to receive. And of course, our consistent call to action that we just went over. So, uh, I'm, who knows what lead nurturing is? Yeah, like three people, okay, kind of assumed. Uh, lead nurturing is really important, and this is, probably one of the most key steps in putting this all together. Because without it, you have all these disjoint pieces. But really, it's, uh, it's, it's the glue that puts everything together. Uh, it's a series of emails, essentially, to build relationships with your lead in order to move them down the buying cycle. Uh, so they're going to get more qualified as they move down, and they're going to get more educated, creating a shorter sales cycle. So by the time they get to your sales team, uh, they're going to be much easier to sell. Uh, it's going to build additional credibility and trust with your prospects and uh, provide additional value. So, uh, so important steps of uh, lead nurturing. Uh, most important thing is figure out your sales cycle. So, you know, we put some example steps up, but that's, you know, relevant to our sales cycle. Your sales cycle might be a little bit different. So if you're your sales team, think about what you need to do. If you have a sales team, you know, talk to your sales team and ask them, what is your sales process? You know, look over your sales process and how does uh, the content that I'm creating push them further down my sales process? Uh, make sure you set campaign goals. You know, what goals do you want for your entire campaign? What kind of conversion rates? Uh, how many leads are you looking to get? Uh, next step you're going to do is you're going to write each email in the, in the lead nurturing campaign. So uh, you might have six or, you know, you could have three emails, you could have five emails, seven emails, kind of depends on how you want to handle things. Uh, but each part of the lead nurturing process is going to have a certain amount of kind of goals and emails that you're going to kind of push through. Um, once your emails are set out, you know, test your campaign, use a small, small kind of group uh, at first and see what your results are. Of course, next. Uh, and then once you see your results, optimize your results. So this is a sample lead nurturing campaign. So as soon as they download 
the first ebook, uh, we send them an email day one. We'll say, uh, here's, here's some additional educational resources. Maybe we'll uh, point them to some blog posts and just say, you know, essentially thank you. Um, next thing, seven days later, we'll say, here's a new ebook um, that you might like. Uh, you know, next, you know, we're, this is essentially uh, called drip marketing, but you're slowly dripping content on them, slowly giving them more value. Um, and then at the end, you know, here's another uh, call to action we have 60 days later. Um, and so it's, you can have multiple email nurturing campaigns set up. So let's say somewhere in the middle of this, you get an inquiry or a request. Somebody talks to you. Maybe they're not ready to buy yet, but they're going to be soon. Uh, you can have a whole separate email nurturing campaign once you've had that same call. So let's say uh, person XYZ called me. I'm going to put them in a different lead nurturing campaign because I may know that they're in a different part of the process. Uh, or let's look at the other side. Let's say they get to day 60 and you didn't get any action from them. Let's take them and put them in a different email nurturing campaign and say, hey, we haven't heard from you. Um, sometimes you can actually put things in the negative and say, uh, this actually works really well if you say, hey, we haven't heard from you, you're in jeopardy of losing X, Y, and Z. Oh, oh crap, okay, I forgot about that. That, that actually has worked very well for us. Um, so that's, that's essentially email nurturing campaigns. Uh, you know, just a sample email of what an email might look like in, you know, your typical, um, your typical, uh, uh, email nurturing. You can make this as uh, generic or you can make this personal. But remember, if you're going to make it personal, uh, a lot of times people can see through the BS and they know that it's going to be an automated message. So don't try and pass it off as a not automated message uh, if you're going to be personal. But some, uh, you know, we've seen it where people don't really know that it's personal as well. Sure. How do you, um, how do you automate the segmenting of your, uh, sure. So uh, we use HubSpot, which is pretty expensive. Um, and it kind of automates this entire process for you. But, you know, uh, email clients, they have, you know, if you use MailChimp, eye contact, they have autoresponders and campaigns that you can set up. So you can set up these campaigns within email marketing clients as well. It's just your stats aren't all tied together in one spot and everything's, you have different pieces. Yeah, I mean, once, I don't know about MailChimp. I know with what we use once, you know, with HubSpot, once you, uh, you know, get the second ebook download. It keeps track of each visitor, so it knows how many downloads a visitor has, and it knows to put them in a new campaign once you've done that. We haven't actually used it in Mailchimp, but um, I don't want to sit here and talk a lot about blogs. HubSpot. I know there is other email marketing software out there, but I'm not all that familiar with it. You know, we've used. Yep. Uh, did you try I haven't. Yeah. So that could be another option. I mean, there's a lot of uh, email market or different solutions out there. This is, I guess, HubSpot ties it all together for us. It's not to say that there's not something else out there, though. Uh, so next, we're going to look at, you know, measurement. I'm sure you guys have heard this. God, we trust all others must supply data. So let's look at our data. Um, A/B testing is important. So. Schedule a time to chat, schedule a consultation. There's a, there's a pretty big difference there in not only views, but click-through rate. Um, more, more call to action. So you can see um, different designs here, different click-through rates, uh, different views. This can make a big difference if you are a high-traffic website, like an extension developer and you're getting big traffic numbers, the difference between 2% and 5% can, 
you know, based on two words, as, as we saw in this last example, uh, you know, this is a difference of essentially two, three words. You know, that's a, that's a big difference in, in what you're bringing in. So again, we need to test our lead nurturing campaigns as well. <clears throat> you know, try out different texts, try out different emails, look at your numbers, see what's performing well, what's not performing well. And then look at your overall performance as well and see how your overall campaign is performing. Um, this is ideally what you wanna see. This is, we just put this out I think like last month maybe two, three weeks ago, but this is one, this is, we had a 30% conversion rate on, so that's really great. From that, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't looked. I, um, those are the dates. But again, metrics don't mean anything uh, if you don't actually do anything with them, so you can look at them all you want, but you need to go back and optimize and adjust. Uh, so just recapping and kind of putting it all together, um, <clears throat> you're starting out with driving traffic to your website. Once they get to your website, entice them with call to actions with premium content, premium content to your landing pages, landing pages to your email marketing, uh, email marketing down the sales funnel over to a conversion, test, analyze, optimize. Uh, what's important? Make sure you have fun with marketing. A lot of people don't like marketing. If you make it fun, you'll have fun with it, you'll get excited about it, you'll see the results. Um, you know, even if you have something that you think might be really, really boring, it's only boring because you're making it boring. You know, uh, have fun with it and other people are gonna enjoy that and that's gonna make your marketing better. Uh, some homework for you guys. You can download the presentation, that link if you want it. Give you guys a second. I don't know, it, 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 it might be. It might be. Everybody get their pictures. <laughs> Good, that'll give me some time to get some water. Uh, more homework. We have a free ebook that goes over a lot of this, actually. No, no, the, no. They're they're both call to actions. <laughs> they're both. Part. The graphic. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I have this thing, no. <laughs> uh, of course, you know, follow our blog. We put a new blog out every day. Uh, more often than not, it's actually about in, inbound marketing and less about Joomla. We probably put out 20, 30% Joomla content, which you guys um, all know about, but the other 70% is inbound marketing content, ranging from everything to email marketing. It's, it's a lot of really good stuff, uh, Luke, who's our inbound marketing specialist is on that every day and he's scouring the web every day and talking about really all the latest stuff. Um, and questions? Yes? Um, what if your target market is broken up into lots of very, very different groups of people and have very different pain? The ultimate product is the same for them? Um, you can make. Joomla, for example. Joomla you know, should be targeting first time users, single site, mom and pops. But the dealer of product team, you're trying to get the serious corporates. Sure. sure. So create multiple offers, create multiple pieces of content. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, they may be different at the top. And obviously, if you can generalize and target them at the top, you know, generalize it. But if you need to break it down and make separate you know, campaigns for each one of those. It could be the same in the middle, it might be different at the top, targeting. Um, you don't need to stick to one. You could, you know, if you're limited on resources, choose the one you think is best and then 
choose that one and then move from there. Um, but you should at least, like I said, be putting out one premium piece of content per quarter. So you could focus one quarter on one thing, one quarter on another thing. Another question? Yep. Um, we, I guess, try and make it as easy as possible to sign up on mobile. Uh, we're actually in the process of doing our mobile site right now as we speak, so hopefully that'll be done. But, you know, we simplified our site to the extent where we knew, uh, it's, it's going to depend on your target audience, I guess. For us as web developers, we simplified things as much as possible. We took out a lot of things. Uh, we looked at our mobile statistics to see who is visiting our site on mobile devices now, and we noticed that a lot of it's going to the blog. A majority of it's going to the blog, and the other is going to probably contact information or just brief information about us. Um, so we're, we're putting, you know, strategically putting our call to actions just underneath our blog pages and on a little bit on our service pages, but uh, it is a different strategy I'd say as how you present the information with mobile, but uh, in the end, it's really all the same. You know, once you get that first, uh, you know, landing page or that first in the door. Uh, so. Um, you want to blog to where you want to drive traffic to. So obviously, if, if you're selling services, blog from your company's website. But you also want to guest blog as well. Uh, when you guest blog, we see this a lot on the Joomla community magazine. Uh, people try and directly talk about their products. You know, and I think this is a common problem uh, even on a lot of websites. Uh, with products, if it's on your website, there are certain strategies directly talking about your products, but you want to go the roundabout way. So if people are looking for, like we said, information on e-commerce stores, tell them about best practices, tell them about uh, some features that are key features that will help their business. So there's the value you're providing them. And then, you know, you have a byline at the end. It shows that you're a... Uh, you know, an expert on stores and kind of soft sell them, let them click over to your site from there. Um, if, you know, that's, I guess, more guest blogging strategy is, you know, be, I should say specifically, you know, be careful with the hard sell because people see through it and you're not necessarily offering value. The important part to remember is make sure to offer value. Yep. So I think you know, it, it really is important to, to, to separate those two things, you know, the hard sell and just kind of building a reputation and, and kind of you know, getting that contact from the user, testing for comments. Exactly. And it goes back to the first point, earn, earn the sale. Earn their trust. Earn the sale. You know, when you're showing their expertise and you keep dripping in and you keep in their ear, they're eventually going to come back. And when they're ready, they're going to contact you. Yep. Absolutely. You know, marketing, 
is a really great thing. When you can collaborate with other people and you can both mutually benefit, that's great. Just make sure that they're not in the same space you are. So uh, you do MageBridge. Uh, you may not, you know, if there's another extension that connected to Magenta, I don't think there is, but you obviously don't want them. But you can use kind of, uh, you know, let's say, let me think of a good example. You know, if there was another extension which wasn't really competing with yours, but your clients would find value in, absolutely. You know, that guest blog is going to work great because um, it's going to give you valuable content for your clients, uh, for your website. It's going to, you know, that's going to uh, show up in search engines, hopefully, and it gives the other person benefit by exposing them to your audience. So. Absolutely, you know, and it saves you time because you don't have to write blogs. <laughs> yep. Um, you can manually do that, but obviously it's, it's not automated. The, I think the key point to take away is if you're offering somebody something that's valuable. Right. Sure. I mean, that's, you know, that's, um, I guess, a more, uh, a, an additional approach you could take to it. But you have to remember, I just, if, if you're offering good content, people are going to want it. So they may not have expected that email. They may not even read that email, you know, but eventually, you know, maybe the third one comes and they might read it. Um, you know, if, you, if, you have to look at yourself, I guess, from the perspective of, of two, you know, where are you in the buying cycle? So maybe you have been getting those emails, but they weren't targeting you properly. So you, yeah, you're annoyed. Maybe you were at the, uh, at the bottom of the cycle and they're sending you emails about the top of the cycle. Um, you know, this approach, as long as you're sending valuable content, they're going to want it. And, and, you know, it's, you can see in the statistics, too, and you can continually look to improve. You know, not everybody's going to click through, but it's the same thing on search engines. You get your 3% click-through rate or whatever your click-through rate is, you know, all the way through the end. So, obviously, not, you know, everybody's not digesting everything, but you're playing to the number game, really, and how can you continue to improve that number game? Yep. Yeah, there really is a there really is a gap in the Joomla world for something that does this process. So, for all you uh, developers out there, make something you can make something happen.
so. Yeah, and now e email newsletters are a little bit different. You know, that's obviously a different uh, concept, but obviously, uh, you know, you want that to be part of the initial campaign of driving traffic to your sites, and uh, and then getting you know getting them from there. Other questions? Going once, going twice. Feel free to connect with us, Twitter. Uh, Facebook, if you guys have more questions, my email and uh, Twitter is up there. And thank you. <laughs>